Okay. All right, so now this might be a little difficult to draw. But at the end, I, I'm not, I may not even try to draw it. At, at the end, he drew some a, a pyramid of hexagons. So there would be one here, and there were two down here. How did he do yeah. that? Maybe I should have stuck with my promise to not try to draw this. That would. Then that is going to be going sideways. Okay, that's fine. So this would be one, two, three, and then I guess we can just kind of extend yeah. this. And so he had triangles of hexagons. Mm -hmm. And what are the triangular numbers? So they're one, one plus two, one plus two plus three. All the way, you just you sum up the integers. Okay, and so in general, so the nth triangular number. It's n times n plus one over two. Okay, so maybe I can write them. Can you tell me what the what the numbers are? The first one's one. One, three, six, ten. And so on. Okay. And the interesting thing he was showing here is that there are solutions. If I call this Tn, so previously with integers, with integers, um, three x squared equals y squared. No solutions. Yep. Right? Mm hmm Okay. And what he was trying to show here... Is that it can work. Is that... What was he trying to show here? So what was his equation with triangular numbers? So... So with the triangular numbers, you can... You can do 3x... 3, I guess times x times x plus 1 over 2 okay. equals y times y plus 1 over 2. All right, so it was 3, let's call it tm equals tn did seem to have solutions. Yeah. Okay. So he gave an example that 3 times the fifth triangular number was equal to the ninth triangular number. So we can actually figure that out pretty quickly because the fifth triangular number one, two, three, four, five, we have it as 15, and then T9, which is going to be 9 45. times 10 over 2, is 45. And 3 times 15 does indeed equal 45. Yeah. But he said, he said this doesn't seem to lead, even though his geometry was the same, he had these triangles. And then he had smaller triangles, and he folded them in, producing, I know, sorry, now I, I did a bad job. So this triangle plus this triangle plus this triangle is supposed to be the area of that triangle. Yep. That led to a contradiction before, and that led to us showing it could never work with integers, but it it's, appears to be exactly the same geometry here. Yep. So what, what do you think? I think it has to do with how you're making the triangles. Okay. Since in the old your old triangles you were going up by two every row. You had one, then three, then five, then seven. In this one you're going up one, two, three, four. Okay. The triangles are gonna look a bit different. Plus the hexagons. They're using hexagons instead of triangles, it might change something. Hmm. Alright. What do you think? I think it I think it might be a little bit different from triangles to hexagons in a different way you like make the triangles format them because these if you had to I think it well, you had to use I'm not sure if I think it was squares but these numbers don't have to be squares okay well so let's, I can, I can show you, sort of like give you a hint of, um, so the problem with the root 2 and the root 3 is we seem to go into this infinite loop mm -hmm. down. But let's look at what happens with T5 and T9. Okay. So I would start with a triangle that has a length 9 here, right? Yep. 
right? Yep. Okay. And it would have layers, it would have nine layers, and they would be, you have, they were nine hexagons in eighth, and seven, and six, and five, and four, and three, and two, and one. And then I, I put in something that has length five here. So this is going to be five, five. This one over here. Maybe I made it just a little bit too long. Here. This one over here has length five. So what's this one going to be in the middle here? It's oh, length, of length of one. Length of one. And then, where's my other triangle going to be over here? So this is also going to be 5 and 5, and this is going to be 1, 1, 1. What do you think is going on with this middle triangle here? That's going to have length 3. I think it'll have length 2, actually. Oh. Since we've got 3 of length 1, so it's going to be 3 hexagons. Uh -huh. That corresponds to a length 2 triangle. Okay, so I think it has a length of two. So how many total triangles would be inside of here? Three. Okay, and how many do we have on the outside? Three. Okay. So what happens to our infinite descent? It just stops. It, it, you get to the point where you fill it up. Okay. And so we find a smallest solution, which happens to be right now at the bottom here. One and three. And then when we did the triangle, when we tried to do that triangle dance, what would happen here now? Well, you covered everything. Right. So there's, there's no small triangles and no big triangles. Right, and then no overlaps. Yeah. So that's kind of a hint as to what, what happens. This process doesn't go infinitely far down. It doesn't go in, it doesn't loop forever. So the, it's a little bit subtle. It shows that when you do the root 2 and root 3 ones with the squares and the triangles in the beginning, you do also have to have a slightly improved argument than the hand-waving argument we gave. You have to show that it never stops. And this seeming paradox he showed with the triangular numbers shows why you have to be careful, because this process actually does stop. So, what do you think of this, uh, the, this, these videos? Pretty neat. It's neat. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Seeing, it's neat seeing connections with algebra and geometry. Good work this morning, guys.